How are you, John? Uh, my name is John Clennard, and I live down the street from John Barry back in Washington. <laughs> um, hey, John. Good to see you, John. Uh, Neighbor? Fir first of all, Henry V next month opens up at the Washington Shakespeare <laughs> Theater. Uh, so let's go, okay? Uh, I have season tickets. I'll give you one. Okay. <laughs> all right. You don't have to report that on a voucher. Okay. Uh, uh, seriously, um, recently a federal judge, I believe in California, uh, issued some sort of um, problem for OPM in the Kozinski case and dragged you guys into a um, domestic partner benefits issue. So would you care to comment? I would, John. It's a good question. Um, you know, look, uh, <coughs> the real, the judge, if, for those of you not familiar with this case, uh, Judge Kaczynski had someone who worked for him uh, who's a federal employee in, in the judicial court system, and uh, they had appealed to him uh, for domestic partner benefits. Now, I, when I first thing I did when I got into the job, uh, obviously would be ver was very interested to see if I had the authority to do this on my own. My general counsel is Elaine Kaplan, who is an open lesbian. Many of you might know her. She's a phenomenal attorney. Um, she was our lead in looking at this, and both her and the Justice Department, and Matt's here from the Justice Department, concluded that basically neither I nor the President have the authority to do this, which is why Congresswoman Baldwin's legislation is so essential and why the administration has testified on behalf of it and is helping work with her to get it done. Because it will give me the authority to do it, and when, as soon as we get it, the President will sign it and I'll do it. Now, the judge has ordered me to go ahead and do it. And the lawyers, you know, are fighting out what I can do or not, and they're going to tell me what I can do. I'm, if, if the Justice Department, everybody tells me I can pay it, I'm happy to pay it. If I, I can't, I can't. But the bottom line is, is no matter what we do, that still only applies to those few employees. What we need to do is pass this legislation so it applies for all of them. I have a partner who would love to have the health insurance program. Tammy has a partner. Elaine has a partner and two kids. The judge's order wouldn't affect any of the three of us. So trust me, we have a personal interest in this, one which we have fully disclosed at the hearing. And you know, we want to see the legislation passed. It'll benefit all federal employees and it will allow me to recruit and retain the best qualified workforce in the country. So, John, that's, that's a long answer to a short question, but that's, that's the answer. Anybody over here uh, while you're eating? Yes, ma'am, when, uh, yep, there you go. If you holler, I'll just repeat it if, oh, here comes. Ginny Fote, uh, Palm Springs City Council. Um, many of us in this room, and probably the majority, hi Roberta, <laughs> many of us in this room and probably the majority of us are not federal employees. And we have another issue with health care. In our jobs, we're covered with health care and we're paying taxes uh, when our partner is covered. And I don't know if that falls under your purview, whereas our, our married uh, straight uh, council members of, or fellow uh, uh, government employees on the local level are not paying taxes on those benefits. It's, it's a great point. It is not under my jurisdiction, but there is going to be legislation working its way through the Ways and Means Committee that would fix that issue regarding the payment of taxes on that benefit. And so it's, it's, that's underway. Uh, it's, it's farther behind than the passage of the DPO for federal employees, but it is certainly under consideration. On this side, over here, against the wall. We'll do two more because I don't want to take away time from Tammy and Jared. Thank you. Um, my name is Benjamin Cruz. I'm with the Guam Legislature. I had an issue with the Census Bureau hiring employees and I'm just I was asked that I asked them out there and they said it might be under your jurisdiction is there any reason why an administration that's pushing universal health care would hire tens of thousands of employees to be census workers pay them enough money to become ineligible for Medicare I mean for Medicaid and yet not provide them medical benefits while they're working for the federal government as employees you know, I, I, I'm unfamiliar with the issue. Obviously, we're happy to follow up with you. 
Um, so Chuck has my information of how you get hold of me. If you get me an email to that effect, and we'll be happy to see what we can do to help. Because uh, we can work with the Census Bureau and see if we can figure out something to help. I'm Steve Kirkland from Houston, Texas. I'm a judge uh, down in Texas. Um, one of the things that the Republicans were very good at doing and that leaves long-lasting consequences for the rest of us is stacking the judiciary. So I was interested to hear that you've mentioned the bench, but you didn't give us any numbers on how many people were getting ready to stack in there. And I think that's very important that we hear some of that. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not at liberty to, to disclose any specific numbers of what's going to be taking place. All I can tell you is there already have been some that have been in the pool and are, are up pending uh, work on the Senate right now. And I suspect there's going to be a lot more before the end of the administration. So more to come. Uh, you know, I can't, can't tell you. That, you know, this, this administration is, is driven by trying to do the right thing and do it methodically so that we don't misstep. And uh, as you've seen, the president, he's a very careful man. And so, uh, you know, we'll be happy to work with you on that and always looking for good suggestions. One more on this side, and then we'll, we'll, I'll get out of your hair. Sounds like I can get out of your hair. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it.